Hello folks and welcome to Tipcast with myself Shane Stavison, joined as always by Shane Brophy, head of sport and Nina Guardian. We have uh, plenty of Tipperary related teams to talk about as we always do Shane, but uh, we, we have to start off in Belfast. You were up there at the weekend and Tipperary beat Antrim handsomely enough, 12 points to 221 for a finish, just in terms of your match report here which is at uh, the Nina Guardian website that I Jason Ford scored 12 points, Jake Morris 2-2, two, two. Sean Kennelly got a couple, there was plenty of other lads who got a point each, and the other side, Aidan O'Brien scored uh, 8 points, 7 frees, Niall McKenna 3, Ronan McAteer 1. It was fairly one-sided stuff from the start, chain. What did Tipperary get out of this game? Yeah, it was just tame enough, and I, I was surprised at that because um, like there was still a chance that Tip would have had to be chasing the score, and, and, and we asked Liam Cahill after the game, did the players know the result of the Limerick game, uh, which finished about five minutes before throwing, and he said he didn't, so I would have thought, okay, minimum first half, Tip would play on the front foot, maybe, in the in still thinking that maybe they had to win to chase the score, like, was, um, and sort of very, all very flat, and like, Probably the best of the conditions were in the first half last weekend. As if, well, it was dark and grey and misty, but just the flow of the game just never like our from our first touch was off for we our handling of the ball and ball wasn't sort of sticking in the forward line. We're sort of taking a lot of chances in in possession. Look, maybe I suppose the Tipperary did undertake the the trip up that morning by bus. Like it's what the guts. I suppose you're talking by bus at least three and a half hours. Like so, it's 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 a tough sled in the legs. Like your lads wouldn't be as fresh as they would if maybe they'd stayed overnight. Um, but I suppose that was a decision they took to decide to overnight after the game. But um, look, it, it worked out for a finish. They got the win. Um, not a perf- not a whole lot you you could take from it. Um. Few individual performances, like I thought, Sean Canelli really brought a, a great bit of energy to the game. I thought he brought his. He was a guy that you could see was going to use that game to impress, particularly out in the wing forward position. I thought he was very effective there, a bit quieter inside. And then, look, look, that's that's what you get nearly a modern hurling now. Anybody who plays inside is heavily reliant on the quality of all coming in, and like that wasn't. It wasn't particularly hectic. Um, Jake Morris again. I think look if if you want a goal scored in inter county hurling, I think I I think he pound for pound he's the best finisher in hurling for goals. Like I think I wouldn't I wouldn't trade him for anyone for for who if you need a goal scored at the death, he's the man to get it. Um Connor Stakelham again, she's just such typical work rate itself, very, very good. Ronan Maher was lord of the thing at full back. Um look, apart from that, you you couldn't take it too much from it. Um Dara Stakelum, good to see him back from his dislocated finger with Sharp off the bench uh, as well. Sean Hayes, I thought he was another one. You could see he took his opportunity a couple of times, we know, from Kiladang and those those searing runs from from half forward, like he's so quick, like and a couple of times just his final offload just didn't go to hand and it's probably just symptomatic of how Tip played. They were just maybe second or third gear the whole day. And look, it was, I think, as I said in my, my analysis piece, Tip are a, are a strange animal at the moment. I think you, you'd agree with me. They tend to play up and play down to the level of their opposition. Yeah. They never, they'll struggle against poor teams. They'll play very well against good teams. Like they'll never, they're, we always say Galway will lay waste to the, to the, to the bad teams like tip sort of now and again they can but they're sort of unless they're tuned in like you, you don't you, you you don't get too excited by them yeah a lot of changes at the same yeah. time and if you want to get shane's column there it's at the the Nita guardian which is available now and uh on the front page or sorry the back page there or the front of the sport you can see st mary's in newport um and we'll be talking about their victory over mm-hmm. Clash to end uh, um uh, as we go along here but just in terms of the conditions up at corrigan park how bad was it? And look, we, we had to allow for the fact that there was a, an awful lot of changes. But um, mm. was it a day when it was very difficult to hurl? Are we going to give the team a little bit of an out? Uh, in the second half, yes. No, I thought the first half either was greasy. and But like the, the pitch looked in great order. Like just look, in fairness, the surface up there is top class. And it did cut up in the second half and then the rain got heavier. So look, I, I definitely think when the match was a match in the first half, I wouldn't take the conditions into too much of an account. Just... I thought we were, we weren't as, 
how would you say, weren't as secure in position as we want to be. We were like we were, we were moving it around or playing it forward, but not very carefully. Like not um, a few times we got some good moves together, but they were few and far between. And I suppose look, I thought the, the disappointed aspect, of course, was was the injury to Owen Connolly, particularly because. I suppose that was the interesting tactical shift to play at the start of the game was no one at centre forward. Like, and I thought, particularly he drifting out towards the left wing, he was very, very effective, got a point. Um, I suppose when he got injured, he had made a surgeon run through the middle, just fell over, and I suppose as he was falling to the ground, probably using his, his arm to, to to brace himself for his fall, his, his elbow probably just went the wrong way. And um, look, I think initially... There wasn't too much, well, in terms of a break, there wasn't too much concern. But I think, like anything with those elbows, I don't know whether you've had them before, if you hyperextend them, it's, it all depends on whether Shane or Owen is a good healer or not. Like anything with ligament damage, it's you can be a quick healer or a slow healer. So hopefully he's the former. Yeah, isn't it kind of, um, isn't it funny how quickly he has established himself? I would have said after what we've seen so far in the league this year and with TUS Midwest, because he was playing midfield for them. And, I was, and it just... I suppose helped speed him into the team, you know, just sort of fast forward his um, his progress. And he really did look like a bit the way Grodo O'Connor did a year before. Very quickly now, this lad has settled into the team. It would be a huge blow to lose him. And um, how how steadfastly was he playing centre forward? Because you know, I was watching the stream and I watched it a couple of times, and I was like, is he wing forward? And obviously, I knew Connor Stakelham. He went over the throw and I was like, okay, he's midfield. But was he playing more as a third midfielder or was he a straight up centre forward, Connolly? No, he was he was drifting out towards the left wing a lot of the time in the first half. Um, I suppose particularly because like Antrim were playing the sweeper, so I suppose he had to try and get out of the middle if he could, maybe to um to I suppose to try and find a bit of space. And he did for his point, and he, he made it one actually very, very lovely flick at it from one of the Antrim defenders to dispossess him. I think he might have ended up in a point for, for Sean Canelli, I think, or, or forward, one or the other in the first half. So, look, I thought he was going well. Um, look, I suppose we'll probably find out more tomorrow when the, the Monster, Monster Championship launch in care. We'll probably get an update on Owen's injury there. But, look, I yeah, it's I suppose with the loss of Seamus Kennedy, um, like Owen has that physical presence and another one of those guys who can play between club and county we can see we, he can play anywhere he can play in the full back line i suppose if needs must and look you look at his pedigree go back to 2018 when we went under 21 all ireland he was 17 years of age i think he was still minor uh he was one of the youngest guy in that team like just showed you how much liam cahill rated him at that time like he was to, to, for him to start as, as the youngest guy in the squad like so um probably taken a bit longer to, to come through which was the injury in the the, the Fitz campaign slowed him down a bit, but um, I can't remember. Was was he named in the Fitz team? I suppose he missed too many games probably to be the named in the Fitz team of the year. He probably would have been on it if he played the whole campaign. Like so, um, but look, hopefully it won't be too long. I think. Look, if if he does miss this Sunday, look, I, I'd say whenever he comes back, he'll he'll be he'll be nearly he's he's nailed on to be in the twenty six anyway, very close to the fifteen. Yeah, just so, some of the other players then. Uh, obviously, Jake Morris was was very very good at times. It's mm. funny, a bit like the Limerick game. At yeah. times, he'll spill the most basic ball popping up in front of him, and then mm. other times he'll just do some of the most amazing stuff going. Yeah. So two two for him again, and it probably would have been a hat trick. Only puzzlingly, Paddy Cadell was put, punished for a throw ball when it was the most textbook hand pass I've ever seen. Mm. It was total separation, and um, Owen Connolly was on the end of that and popped it in for for Morris to score. But um. Just uh, Sean Ryan then was playing full forward, I suppose, up at the tip of the diamond. And, like, he's had a good year and stuff. It just didn't stick to him, did it? No. Um, like, do we got to say conditions are tough for an inside mm. forward? Bit of a mistake. It's very serious. It's Marco was touched. Like, it's just, I suppose, the, it's probably the thing we've seen a lot from Sean this year is that he's very, very good now in front, getting out in front of his man. And... He's very, very good at making the ball stick. Just for whatever reason, today on Saturday it just didn't stick to hand. And you were, he was probably anticipating maybe a game like this. He could maybe get a couple of scores and build up his confidence. And um, I suppose probably frustrating for him that he was taken off at half time. But I suppose maybe the tip management decided, look, we better get maybe a bit more mo bit mobility around the half forward line to move Sean Kennelly inside even though he had a good first half and got more speed out there in Sean Hayes. And that definitely worked. Like, was, 
I think Sean def- got on a couple of balls and, and took off like he like he uh, coming in from that wing forward position he does for for Kiladang and um very unlucky not to get a goal in the second half too just narrowly wide at the end of a flow and move so um I thought from Sean Ken- Sean Hayes's point of view very very encouraging as well and um I'd be thinking ahead of looking ahead to the Clare game. I would be talking and somebody like Sean Hayes could be very effective off the bench against Clare because Clare, Clare are, a, are a fast team, but they'll let you hurl too. Like and the, Clare will give you, they'll give you space. Like because like they're like, like maybe some other teams who are very, what would you say, uh, tactically rigid. Clare have a certain amount of it, but they will trust their hurling ability and speed as well. Mm, okay, well, just, they, they, um, they, they'll, they'll give you chances. Yeah, that's true. So. Um... I suppose there was a bit of an update from Liam Cahill on Cahill Barrett, and he just said Cahill is just finding it hard to get himself right. So you might give a bit more detail on that. Yeah, so so I like the, the whole panel travelled up on um, Saturday, and it was just about five minutes, ten minutes before the end, we saw this line of Tipperary players. So, so, so that's a common. I said, where are these lads coming out? Yeah, it's just that the the, the non twenty six guys had gone in to tug out and they were going to the the, the the area at the back of the goals. People know Corrigan Park is a big grassy area. Like that they were they went and did a full on training session like and a few of the subs that maybe only got a few minutes went on went to join them afterwards and I suppose like Cahill Barrett took part in the warm up part but then sort of did his own light running session while the rest of them were going to put through their paces. So um, obviously, like we we heard after the Westmead game that Cahill was being lined up to come back against against Limerick and Antrim, but obviously he had a bit of a setback with his hamstring in the meantime. So, and look, we all know those hamstrings are bloody delicate. Like when they're they're <laughs> just as you think they're ready to go, they can they can go again. So look, they're obviously they're being as cautious as they can with him. They want him, they want Cahill right for the twenty eighth of April. Um, but geez, like they're. Potentially, I, I'd be shocked if I'd be surprised if he lines out this weekend. I just thought if you're already doing a light running session, it's hard to see you being even part of the 26 against Clare. So maybe that's why I'd be thinking that we, we really do tip no harm to get to a league final and maybe give Cahill an extra fortnight to maybe get right and be part of that game and hopefully get some minutes under his belt. And um, yeah, from that point, Mark Kyo, obviously the ankle. Injury picked up against Westmead was more uh, serious than we thought, so um, probably won't feature this weekend. To say he might be back for a league final, but should be back for the Munster Championships. So obviously, whatever bit of ligament damage he sustained that day was was pretty severe. Um, even though he, I think he went over early in the ankle in that game, um, but he played on through the first half, got his two one. So um, obviously, did a bit of damage while he was running there or playing there. So. And uh, of course, look, we got confirmed that Seamus Kennedy is out for the rest of the year. And I suppose Liam had some nice things to say about him. And I think a lot of things um, we would all associate with Seamus. And I know people might think we're, we're it's when you, when you be when you be saying if wherever there's a fire, Seamus will put it out. But like that's I would say that's a good thing in a way. Like Seamus, we know Seamus can hurl his athletic, but like there's nobody who you know there's nobody you'd want better in the in the heat of the battle than Seamus like and um he's he's just going to be a ferocious loss and not only on the field but I'd say in and around the dressing room and I I would like to think maybe on match days Seamus will be still around the squad like and um being that leader like and he probably won't be at every training session from now on but I'd love to think on maybe match days or the last training session before a championship game that he'll be with the group and um playing his part there yeah, okay. Well, just reflect on the on the tables here on GA League tables. To be fair, they're always brilliant. Mm. Uh, you can see Clare there, they're unbeaten with nine points from the 10 available. Kilkenny are in second there, they're true with seven points. And they'll face Limerick, who are obviously top of 1B, uh, Tipperary in second position there. And I, I suppose, like, just to even project on to the summer, we were talking about beforehand that we've done our projected 15s, what we think mm. the team will be for the summer. But well, maybe in light of some of the injuries, we might update yeah. and go to a bit of a volume two here. And look, we, we both think Cahill Barrett is good enough to start and, and probably should start. Mm-hmm. But I think in light of it now, it's a bit of a race against time. And yeah. let's just sort of suggest that he won't be able to start this game. Same yeah. with obviously Seamus Kendi won't be able to. Uh, yeah. We both had him in our starting team as well. And Owen Connolly, actually, neither of us had him had mm-hmm. in the team at the time, which will tell you how far he's come yeah. in a short space of time. But 
are there any initial changes you'd make to your team or some of those players who are still fully fit that you might change around? Um, I probably, yeah, I, I suppose in terms of the backs, look, I think it's still a fair chance with Cahill will get right, but at the moment you'd have to think you'd be, you'd be fairly, you wouldn't be very confident. Uh, well, if just say assuming maybe he still has difficulty, I, I'd probably be looking at maybe Michael Green going back a line. But we know Michael will probably play in that sort of free role. He probably will, like no, very few teams play three inside. So you're probably saying Michael will be a fourth half back or or he'll be he'll be given some sort of, he'll be, he'll be in a mobile position anyway. So, um, and I'd probably be looking at Brian O'Mara on the wing and Robert Byrne at centre-back. And in fairness, look, Robert Byrne has done nothing wrong so far. Um, look, I think what he gives us in physicality and, phys- and presence I suppose his distribution is probably the aspect of his game that's probably maybe when you compare him to the likes of John Conlon and um, Declan Hannon and, and that's probably where he's probably not as strong as we would like him to be but look I suppose at the moment we're just and, he, and, he, and he's if you go back to 2018 like I think Liam Cahill I think Liam Cahill trusts him. Like I just think he, he I think Liam Cahill knows what he's going to get from him. And um, I think, look, he hasn't been found wanting so far. Like, and I think we would agree that he's just, he mightn't be, he mightn't be a lot of people's first choice for a start in fifteen place. But I don't, I don't think he's done anything wrong. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, I, I agree. I think Breen is going to pick up. There'll generally be a man marking job for him, yeah. and if it has to happen in the full back line, it'll happen there. If it has to be in the in the in the half back line, he'll yeah. go there. Danny Slattery made his league league debut the other day, yeah. and I was kind of watching it during the game, and I was like, right, maybe he's just done quite well in his manner. The man, ball hasn't come to his man, but it seemed to be a a fairly fuss free affair. Yeah, so, plus he was he spent a lot of the time around the middle third. I think he, had, he scored a point, and he needed to drive one wide. And look, he's. Like we know he, he plays corner back for the county, but he plays up front for the for for, for Clonolty. Like he he's very you could sort of play him anywhere. Like you could see you could see why when when Antrim were going to play an extra body around the middle that he was comfortable out there. So uh, but look, yeah, a good solid debut for Danny. All right, um, he, he pretty he would have been pretty happy with that. Yeah. So just the rest of your team. So you've you've like Reece Shelley played the other day. Barry Hogan has also been playing. So that one's up in the air. Uh, Michael Breen, Rona Maher, Craig Morgan. We both have the same full back line. We both have the same half back line now. Uh, midfield then. So Willie Connors. Well, look, let's let's hope that he's uh, he's good to go and that there aren't too many more injuries. Like, the way I look at it, like I, I the like, tips last three matches, like they haven't been wonderful. Um, the first two matches, I thought we were very slick, and Connors played them both. Um, Maybe maybe the fact that Tip maybe wanted to hit the league fast and we have looked a little sluggish, but that could be deliberate in terms of maybe being like, I suppose the last thing you want to do is be fresh in the league and tired in the championship, in which we probably were last year. Maybe there's been a deliberate reply maybe to maybe to load up in terms of fitness training and maybe during the league. and for The opposite the of Limerick, really, because Limerick yeah. didn't go... Met too many of their players in the first two games against yeah, Antrim. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just think, yeah, I thought against Dublin and Galway, we looked... There's no doubt we looked energy, we looked energetic and we looked fresh and fast. I don't think we've had that same energy since. And I think I think that could be deliberate. I wouldn't be surprised maybe if if maybe training sessions in those weeks have been pretty hard and like you just don't have the same energy levels. I'd be look, I'd be shocked if whatever about this Sunday, first round of the championship against Limerick, we don't have a serious energy level. I could and plus we'll need it against Limerick, like so. Yeah, and are you hear much about Barry Heffernan? Uh, I think he's fine as far as I can. I'm, you know, he just didn't make the twenty six. Like so, right. um, he he did the he did the he was in the training session. So obviously, he just did make the twenty six and and the weekend. Okay, I find that a little bit odd, but um, maybe there's a tactical reason for that or holding him back for another game. Yeah. But um, you know, and you, and you could obviously slot him in the half back line or or maybe even yeah. midfield. But uh, I thought Cadell did quite well the other day. He's after getting a couple of games yeah. in a row, so. Maybe he'll slip into that team then. I know, yeah, you're you're a fan of his. Yeah, I think I have a, have a spot to fill there on my team. You do. You have number twelve to fill. Now you've got Alan Tyne in midfield, but yeah. midfield half forward all yeah. the one really, isn't it? I think you can throw. I think I, I think I, I think you can throw Dan McCormick in. I do think when push comes to shove against Limerick, I think you'll need Dan in there. Um, so um, the interesting one for me will be against Limerick is. 
I think that game is made for Bonner Maher to start. Like I I would just say I'm saying it now. If I was like say Bonner, empty yourself against Limerick because you probably won't start against Waterford. Like you put six days after. Like I we saw last year when we played Limerick and why well, I say Waterford are probably a more mobile team. Well, you know what? They they play differently than Limerick, but they're, they're, there's a bit more speed to them. And I think maybe you'd need a bit more power against Limericks inside forwards, where you need maybe a forward with a bit more speed against Limerick Waterford's backs. Would Dranson? Would you think that? Or mm, I mean, to some, there's probably elements of truth to that. But yeah. I, still, I still look at some of the power that uh, that you have in the back of that Waterford team. Mark Fitzgerald, very athletic player. Connor mm. Punty. Now, this is assuming everybody ends up being mm. fit. Uh, will Caelan Lyons be out the field or will he be in the half back line? Ty de Burka is supposed to be back very, very soon. So it, ju- it just depends on what team. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's just that, that six day turnaround. And look, if there's one man who will be ready, like Bonner is, Bonner is as, pro- I think he's the, mo- he must be most, one of the more professional, let's say, hurlers out there. Like he's just meticulous in his preparation. Like he is. He is as fit as they come. Like I'd say, if there, I'd say if you did a sort of a superstars thing of intercounty players hurling on football, sort of who is the fittest? I think he definitely be Tipperary's representative anyway. Like so, if there's anybody who would play two games in six days at a high level, it'd be him. I just thought it was just a worry last year when, but well, in fairness, look, everyone was sluggish against Watford six. Let's say the week after Limerick, so maybe maybe I'm a bit hard on him. Like, but um. I do think against Limerick, he might be he might be needed inside. Like, but then who would you be taking out? Would you would you take out Tynan and maybe go with more, or would you hold Noel McGrath till the second half? Who knows? Like, it's it'll be an interesting to see how they line it up. Yeah, well, get it and get your teams in there, folks. Let us know who you'd put in and maybe who you'd sub out. Um, Noel McGrath played fifty six minutes the other day. It's probably. Pretty quiet performance from Noah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose out in wing forward. Um, I thought Young Walsh, the wing back, did had a had a good game on him. Um, yeah, I'm still, uh, I'm still one of those that feels that Noel needs to be in a deeper role. He needs to be, he needs to be our like you look at Declan Hannan converted forward, John Conlon converted forward, Cahill O'Neill converted forward. Rich, is Richie Reid was he a, was he initially a forward? Was he a goalie? Uh, he was a goalie at one stage. A goalie, right? Could, could maybe maybe they're maybe they're maybe they're holding it back or something. But I still think at his at his age and his brain that he would he be the ideal person in that sort of quarterback position. If he gets a ball in his hand, that he's gonna he's gonna find somebody. He's he'll he'll you he'll, he'll maximize it to the best of, of his ability. Yeah, I kind of reckon that like his games open up in the last fifteen. Throw him in somewhere centre forward maybe, and I think he'll. He might mm-hmm. score as many points coming on in the last 15 minutes as he would in a full game. Yeah. Um, but even looking at the way Hannon played against Galway the other day, he had to mark his man an awful lot. Yeah. And I think if you're going to throw Noah McGrath back there, having not played in the backs for, I mean, the 2013 qualifier mm-hmm. against Kilkenny is the last time I can remember him in the half back line. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't know. But I, I was thinking that if Cahill Barrett was okay and back at this stage, that Given the way Craig Morgan, Rona Maher, and Breen yeah. were going in the full back line, that you could nearly throw Cahill Barrett centre back because if he has to mark, he can yeah. mark, but he has the speed to cover at the same time. But maybe later in the summer that would be yeah. an option. I, 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 I do get the sense that we haven't, we haven't, we haven't seen the best of tip. We saw, we, I think against Dublin and definitely Galway, we saw glimpses of what we could do when we're motor, and I, I still don't think we unloaded against Limerick. Um, I, I, I was disappointed that night. I don't think we had a. I don't think we brought anything new to trouble them. But that's not me. Like why, why? If you were going to throw a little nugget at them, I am not sitting at enough for a minute saying that Limerick wouldn't be prepared for some anything that another team would throw at them. But uh, you you wouldn't be showing it to them at this stage. Like so. Mm. Um, but like um, yeah. Look, I think it's. I'm looking forward to this Sunday now. I think it'll be the fact that. There's a two-week gap to the final. I think both all four teams will really go at it this weekend. Um, I suppose it looks like the, the weather might finally turn a small bit for the better. Like, she couldn't stay going as bad as it is. But um, yeah, I'd, be, I'd say the one thing the GA are hoping that it's not a Limerick Clare final. I'd say they're absolutely terrified of maybe of a, of a shadow boxing league final two weeks before the championship. 
Yeah, and it could well happen because the way Limerick are going, uh, to, to draw with 14 men, mm. what, 14 men for about 40 odd minutes, like, like that was quite impressive. And Go even needed two injury time points just to draw a level. But um, it'd be difficult to make a case for Kilkenny to beat them down at Park Creek this weekend. Uh, well, on recent form in the league final and the All Ireland final, yes. Um, but look, you just like Kilkenny uh, aren't going great, are they? No, like they're, they're just they're just doing enough at the moment. And like you, you, you give them a small bit of a pass last weekend. The conditions were horrific, but look, they you just know in those types of games that they'll find a way to dig it out. And like I'd be. I wouldn't be surprised if Derek Ling tries something this weekend in terms of maybe, okay, if we play Limerick down the road again in a quarter semi or an All-Ireland final, can this work against them? Like, I think this is, I'd say this is one that Derek Ling is actually welcome and just, if will they throw, will they throw something different in terms of strategy or something like that? Just as he potentially could it work in game, like, so. Do you know what's an interesting stat that, um, Clare scored just one goal so far in the league from mm. five games. Flip side, Tipperary have scored 11. Mm. Now, you know, you might say that one side of the league maybe is slightly stronger than the other. Mm. And you could, you'd probably make a, a fair case for that. So Tipperary's group wouldn't be quite as strong. But um, like the way Clare are going, mm. and this has been without Tony Kelly and with, you know, without Ryan Taylor and Shane O'Donnell and, and what have you, like they are motoring very, very nicely coming up to championship. And, what would you like to see from Tipperary this weekend? Um, yeah, just back to clear. I just think maybe the lack of goals, I think it's two things. The three players you mentioned, they're very, very good at penetrating runs and maybe drawing a player and slipping the ball inside. So they have lost something in that. And they're all, secondly, they are a team that looks like they they, they set themselves up. If a, if a long-range shot is on, they go for it. And like they're, they're sort of elements of the Limerick game where if you the more you shoot the more the higher the chance you win the game like if you the more shots you, you take I suppose if you don't shoot you don't score like and I think um that could be an element maybe that they're, if they the Jeremy Ryan scores an awful lot from long range we know Conlon can do it as well like so um so yeah look look Claire have been more nice like they, they've won what four wins and a draw but they, they haven't they've been winning but they're out being dominant, like so. Um, I thought I suppose that's a, that's a good way to be, like, uh, particularly that they haven't they've been mixing the matching their their team every day that they've gone out. So, um, assuming uh, the three guys we mentioned won't feature this weekend, outside of that, I'd say I'd be surprised if they don't go pretty strong. The likes of Adam Hogan, Connor Cleary, and in their in their full back line. Um, yeah, uh, Jeremy Ryan, John Conlon, David McInerney. I, I, it's, I think it'll be. I think it's a game tip. Will, I think it's a day game tip can win. I think. I think it's a fifty fifty game. Like I do think. Uh, I said it to you off air that one thing Claire will let you play. Like they and they'll they'll play against you. And I think that's the that's the way. That's the reason why Claire sort of give Limerick their best tests because I don't think they. They get too bogged down. They, I think they trust their ability to have a go against them. Like it, and they've only come up narrowly short. Like I suppose maybe their elements in their finishing, maybe in the last ten minutes of games, that haunts them. But I still think, and I said it last week, I still think the best way of potentially beating Limerick is going toe to toe with them as much as you can. Um, this weekend, then, isn't it one of those things where you're like, got to be brilliant to go out and give everything and be clear versus. Yeah. God, the risk of injuries coming so close to championship. And this is something that every team is facing, but it does feel like with Owen Connolly a little bit of a doubt now, Cahill Barrett, obviously, mm -hmm. there's doubts there how he'll be for the first round. And obviously, Seamus Kendi gone for a year. You're almost entering a game like this. You know, as a manager, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be surprised if they were a little bit filled with trepidation. Uh, I suppose if you're a manager quietly, you'd probably be thinking like that. But I would think... Like this Sunday is four week, five weeks out from championship for tip four for for Clare and Limerick, especially. So um, I suppose look anybody, you probably gets any sort of a muscle injury. I'd say from now on, you're you're in you're you're in trouble. Like so for to be ready for the first round. Um, look, I would have thought, look, like 
I think Tip, I think Bode, I, I, I can't see Tip and Clare not going hard for this. Um, I suppose an unusual enough venue in, in Port Leash, I suppose, with the way the weather and then things are nearly getting anywhere that's playable is, is, is a bonus. I just hope maybe that the Leash down match the day before doesn't doesn't hurt the pitch too much like so um but yeah i'd be like i suppose a lot of it maybe in terms of the tip team will depend on maybe has willie did willie connors pick up an injury or has he just held out for a while i'd love to see maybe him coming back in for this game um was like if you go back to last weekend have your starters like who are you really missing connor bow um barrett potentially um it gets there wasn't we were nearly we were nearly pretty close last weekend out of the potential players we had to nearly a, a, a full team yeah do you, see, do you see mark Keough forcing himself back into the starting team or will he continue to have probably somewhat frustrating for him the role of an impact sub uh i'd say the latter is where he is at the moment i just think we're still waiting for him to have like okay when Waterford in twenty twenty two he started full forward and he got two goals. I think he's here and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to get away from like he, he does come off the bench and impact games massively. He did it against Cork last year, he did it against was it Galway in the league this year? Did he come off the bench? Did he get did he come off the bench against Galway to get those three points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, good, like yeah. it's and look having that bit of an impact so but does the team no harm too like so may, look, i'm sure there'll be games where maybe potentially to Waterford he'd be a very very good starter um but you, you'd like you like some bit of a, 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 a i suppose a bit of energy off the bench and this was the longer his injury the longer he's not able to play or maybe train at the moment i'd say you're probably he's probably looking like a bench player maybe at the early stages of the championship just not to go too deep into into Munster, but at the moment, Clare looking very impressive. Cork seemed to have hit a rich vein of form, and they've scored six go seven goals mm -hmm. in the league. Six of them have been Alan Connolly in the last two games. Waterford mm -hmm. not going particularly impressive at the moment. Then obviously Limerick are looking pretty imperious, so it's it's going to be a bloodbath of a Munster championship. Oh yeah, and like what what we're seeing now will not resemble what we're seeing in the twenty first of April. Like I. <laughs> I, I, if I was to put a fiver on a result in the first weekend, I, I nearly back Watford to be Cork. I just think Davy is just the master of. I think he'll get he. I, I think Davy. It's for this year. It's all been about winning that first game. And I think while the results have been poor in the league and things like that, he probably hasn't put out his best fifteen in any of the games. And there's a frustration with the quality, the type of hurling they're playing. And I do think. Maybe at the end of the year or whenever he's finished with water, I think there's definitely a something's gonna happen. Something's coming in Waterford where the style of play is definitely they're gonna have to start listening to supporters. Like the 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 the, the, the attendance is at the Waterford home games have been absolutely awful. Two nine oh nobody, Kenny. There's nobody going, and like I think a lot of it is the the, 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 the style of hurling they're playing, like. When Watford, okay, and they never didn't win in All Ireland, but in their best days, they were swashbuckling, energy, quality hurling, like, and I just we're not seeing that. And even though they've they've loads of quality individual hurlers, but I just don't think they're they're being allowed to express themselves. Like they're very, they're very tied into a system's style of a game that is not, it's not very, ex, it's, it doesn't express the complete level of their talent. As far as I, I as far as I can, as far as I'm concerned like do, do you honestly see them coming out of months or is beating cork i mean cork are looking pretty good at the moment and the options they have are are quite incredible cork have to prove to me they can win a big win a big match yeah. we're, 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 there's a lot of people saying cork will finish third up a lot of it is based on potential they have to i think they, they have to put up or shut up is the way i talk about cork this year but surely Waterford have proven even far less. Like the league games, they've, league they've won league under the championship, league championship. And the only championship win was over Tipperary, who were very poor, but it was a very good win for Waterford. But I would say league is league, championship is championship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But like, okay. But like, I, 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 I'm here, like Cork, 
I still think Cork, they haven't done anything yet. We're, I think we're purely basing it on potential. Okay, but like if you look at the forwards they have coming into champ, yeah. assuming everyone stays fit, yeah. like just in the forwards alone, yeah. uh, Dalton, Harnady, Brian Hayes, Patrick Horgan, Alan Connolly, Shane Barrett, Shane Kingston, Lahan, Jack O'Connor, Sean Toomey, Robbie O'Flynn, Ben Cunningham is another one coming. We haven't seen him yet because of injury. Like the options, Dara Fitzgibbon in midfield, Luke Mead, Mark Coleman, the two Downey brothers, Kieran Joyce, Sean O'Donoghue. That's a lot of power, physicality in hurling. Can they win the match in the last 10 minutes? What's that? Can they win the match in the last 10 minutes in the championship? Yeah, it has been a trouble over the last yeah. 20 years. That's... that's... When the, again, the game is in the fire and wild fire. Here's, 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 a, here's a hypothesis. La five minutes to go in Watford and the game is on the line. Who would you trust, Watford or Cork? Um, I mean, my gut instinct is Cork at the moment. Yeah. yeah I, but, I, I don't know. I, I find why. Someone tells me Watford would, would find a way out of that one. Like so. Well, do you know what? You've made this game all of a sudden a bit juicier for me because yeah. I was almost going into this one thinking... You know the way they say in American sports, don't yeah. sleep on, on a certain team or whatever. Yeah. But maybe I am a little bit on Watford and almost counting them as an all well, like, Because, like, for, look, you think about Watford, on paper, there's no easy games in Munster, but on paper, Watford's two most winnable games are the first two, home to Cork, home to Tip. If Watford, if Watford had no, if Watford had that minimum to have to win one of their first two, because you if they have to go to Ennis or Limerick looking for a win to stay in the championship, I just, I, you can't see it. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think while there's a lot of focus on their poor league campaign, and I, I, I don't think Davey was overly concerned about not keeping their Division 1 status. Maybe their county treasurer probably next year would be worried because they won't have a, they'll have no glamorous games as far as I could see in Division 1B or 2 or whatever it's called. Like, um, but, I think for Waterford, it's it's all about the twenty first of April against um, against Cork. Yeah, just in turn, a lot of it down is down to do they pick a team where I understand what they're trying to do and yeah. it sort of looks coherent to me. Yeah. But one thing you would say is that they only conceded two goals from their five league games, so yeah. that is something positive to hang your hat on. But then put yeah, like yeah, agree. Their second halves, so you, you can't look. What we've seen so far, like you can just based on what we've seen, it's not it's not encouraging. Their second halves are poor. Even the win over Offaly, a couple of defensive howlers by Offaly sort of made and, and a red card sort of maybe made that final scoreline as probably I did it didn't it probably wasn't a fair reflection. I think Offaly were much closer that day. So um look and I suppose the fact that you have you're probably playing as a Stephen Bennett who's not... It looks like Bennett is just going from game to game. Like, we saw that interview where he's more or less... This is his last year, and he doesn't look very mobile. Like, they're playing... It looks like they're... And when you're sort of playing a guy who's not near his ultimate fitness level, and you're sort of playing him because you... Nearly a sense you have no choice because of what what he could give you, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, his presence and his leadership, and look, there's no doubt... Put a ball, give a ball to Stephen Bennett, and he'll do something with it. Like it's, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic six man. So five and three won't go, monster. Um, yeah, we'll revisit this conversation. Yep. There's like. a lot of a lot of people saying tip will be the odd man. Like assuming Watford are fifth, the, the tip will be the odd team out. Um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. God but knows. Like, but I don't a... think I don't I don't mind being in that situation because. Um, I suppose it keeps the pressure off to a small, a certain extent. Yeah, it's kind of seen in a way as Limerick and Clare will get through and then a battle for the other spot. But anyway, like, we'll... would anybody be shocked if, like, it's 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 a, it's 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 a people people say the first match is so important. Yes, in the two Clare in the two to four in four in the four years of the round robin, Clare have lost their first game twice and ended up in the Munster final after. Mm. They've, they've recovered like so I suppose the thing is don't first game is important but it's not to be all and end all there's still another six points to play for like and if you get if you get six points you're going to get to a monster final whether you win the first game first three 
or you lose the first one in your last three, like it's it's all about the accumulation of points at the yeah. end of the day. Like so and sometimes losing the first game can really highlight what's wrong with the team and what players yeah. you maybe needed to swap out and swap in. So yeah, there is I like, that. Yeah, like, I still think it's a it's a it's a delicious scenario that hypothetically Claire beat Limerick and tip potentially tip I think tip playing a, lo- a, a wounded Limerick the following week tired look you'd still fancy Limerick to win I think I think from tip's scenario they probably would prefer maybe Limerick to get a result in Clare and maybe not have them all or nothing maybe the following Sunday if you know what I mean like I'd be and that what wouldn't it be some scenario if, if Nobody sees it at the moment, but there is potentially a possibility Limerick could be off him too. Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. Unlikely. Look, but. The way they're going, but I do believe that if they're going to be caught, it's not in Croke Park. So oh, yeah. Yeah. it's going to have to be done in Munster if that can be done, and it seems a yeah. bit unlikely at the moment. But um, just in terms of the other semi-final, then I, I presume we're both back in Limerick to get the job done against Kilkenny. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. Um, sure... Look, we saw last weekend, look, it wasn't a pretty game, but like, like Limerick, 14 men, you didn't even know they were a man short for, for all that time. You just knew if there was one team that would cope in that situation, it would be them. I suppose the, the, the negative for them was not Shane O'Brien, or Shane O'Brien, was the, the injuries they picked up, like, and um, look, they have bodies to come back. And look, I suppose, there's, is it today or tomorrow? There's the Kyle Hayes is... Um, Today, sentencing is coming up, like so. That'll be an interesting thing. And look, there's no doubt they're preparing for the worst with the way they played Cahill O'Neill in the half back line, like so. Look, okay, that's smart from them, like they're, they're covering all bases. And look, I thought he was, I think, over the last two games, he's been excellent, like so. Um, look, Adam English is really knocking down the door to get a start, but you could, you could, you could probably bar injury nearly pick their starting six forwards, like because they're not going to mess around with that. And uh, unfortunately, English and O'Dall League are probably have just have to be wait their turn, maybe as impact subs for the moment. Um, yeah, I think they'll have, I think they'll have too much for for Kilkenny on on, on Saturday evening. Yeah. Um. Did you much to report? I know you were up in Belfast and hmm. covered a lot of tip stuff. Much to report from the first weekend of league action in Tipperary. Um, not an awful lot, I suppose, from the few games that went ahead. No, um, I suppose surprised how as many of them went ahead as possible with some of the rain. I know we, we got out against Ross Gray and on Sunday and had a good win, good crowd actually in Ross Gray. I think clubs were just people are mad to get out and, and see some some hurling again. So, um, yeah, not not ma- massively to report, I suppose, early days yet. Um, I suppose good win for Tumi Vara away to Turles Arsus. I suppose that was a that would have been a, probably a, a noteworthy one as well. I suppose, look, Killinall had a huge win in, in Temple Derry. Um, I suppose Premier Jamija team up against a senior team, but look, there, so there wouldn't be a huge gap between the two. And um, I didn't get a team line out to see whether whether Bubbles was playing. I know they've lost a couple to Australia, Killinall. Um, so, so I assume maybe with two twenty eight Bubbles was probably playing to, to get a high score like that. So maybe maybe that's Killinall maybe putting out a bit of a. Maybe a notice that they're they're going to try and hit the ground running this year in Premier Intermediate, and they'll have to. Like, there's so many good teams down there. Yeah, um, it wasn't a good day at the office for the Tipperary footballers there at the weekend. Um, some, 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 some fucking, some, watch my language, some mess with the venues, wasn't it? Yeah, four ten to eight points eventually when it did go ahead at Feathered um, on Sunday afternoon. And Paul Kelly, the manager, was saying afterwards, when you give the ball away in certain areas of the pitch, you make it very hard for yourself. When a team has a more athletic approach and a more athletic delivery than us, you will get punished. So, you know, no Connor Sweeney, no Stephen O'Brien, Mark Russell did come on, but um, God, that's that's yeah, a I looked at, he's I was just looking at the, the team lineup and we saw the pro I think we did you see the the, the, the program that had the the, the the positional switches and you had players that would have been playing in the half back line paid in midfield. There was definitely a sense that while Tip potentially had a chance of promotion last weekend i think paul it looked like paul kelly and the management had more or less decided no we're we're going to try some things try players in different positions and look it just it didn't work out and you know we're up against a wexford team who looked looked fully well looked tuned in and fully focused on what they need to do and and to cut through tip in the first half like four goals and 
just um yeah just disappointing and i suppose look it's it's been it's been a, a disaster of a, of a league really like i i didn't expect us to be promoted but i didn't expect us to be to be struggling as much as this like you have only what four points to show for three games to one win and two draws and like you're going to Leitrim this weekend who nothing well we have nothing to play for but Leitrim are going for promotion so look if, if if our heads are not right and we're not professional enough like Leitrim are going to be trying to cut through us and, and probably trying to do it with maybe a bit of a score if it goes to maybe score I, I don't know no it won't go to score difference because I think there's a Longford and Wexford playing each other, so but um, you know, Longford are be chasing the win. It's just yeah, it's just I, I just uh, even though the start of the league, I suppose we were maybe giving them a pass, even though they lost to Carlo. Like there, we, we, it did look like there were signs of optimism, but it definitely has waned since. And you're thinking, um, God, that that monster championship game in three weeks' time against Watford is very, very. <laughs> Is very very dodgy ground now. It is absolutely you can't. Jesus, like you you be you be worried now that you'd be worried about going to Dungarvan that that Sunday afternoon and getting a win. Yeah, Just the way things are going at the moment. Back to the fixture mess though, and look, we know pitches have been ravaged, but it, originally the game was supposed to be in Temple Tui. Then Temple Stadium. Temple Don't Stadium. Then that. like yeah, just uh, picking up the article yeah. uh, article here. Then you're looking at Temple Tui. Then you're looking at St. Patrick's pitch in Enniscorthy. Then Ferns GA Centre of Excellence. Mm-hmm. And then eventually back to Feathered Town Park. And Paul Kelly was saying, my understanding was there was no grass pitch made available in Tipperary. Wexford then offered their grass facility and we accepted that. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. on Saturday, um, unfortunately yesterday was a different day. He's referring to Saturday. The caretaker in Feathered was telling me the, the field, the grass pitch would not have been playable on Saturday. But this is a beautiful facility and Tipperary should be very proud of it. I would love to have be able to avail of it much more. I don't know why we can't. There's a preference to a grass pitch as players are training in very heavy surfaces. Um, anyway, look, it's just not an ideal setup at all. And Paul Kelly's had a lot of different hurdles this year, and that would have been a very unwelcome one over the weekend. Oh, yeah. Like and just and I suppose the fact that um I do think it's a it's a thing that the GA need to look at in terms of their schedule and like there should there should be a, a week there should be a fortnight's gap between the penultimate round and the final round just particularly the way Irish weather is just have that free weekend in case there's a weather and that you could slot it in on the and the second uh, and a free weekend because like because like there were both counties nearly had to get the game on last weekend because this was the final round just coming up like and um yeah. I, yeah, I, I was like, I could under, I can understand Paul Kelly and his Wexford counterparts thinking that, like, Feather Town Park was available to take the game on Saturday, but neither of them, and I could understand it too, because you're training in heavy pitches and stuff, and suddenly you're going onto an all weather, like you're asking for trouble with with injuries, like and muscle injuries, because you're going from a slow pitch to an ultra fast pitch, um, and I, I believe the. They would have played on the 4G on Sunday if the tree, if the all weather or so the sand based pitch in Feather Town Park wasn't playable, but it was like so. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's just it's it's not ideal. I don't know, just I think he's he's he getting a glimpse maybe of the, the difficulties in terms of football in Tipperary and then not being the number one sport, and maybe maybe some clubs who. Ordinarily, would love to have the footballers in, but we're thinking, God, we better protect our pitch for our own games. And look, there was, look, there was a lot of county hurling league games either played last weekend, so those pitches were being saved for Sunday or called off because the pitches weren't playable. So um, you can understand maybe how how hard it was to maybe get an available pitch last weekend within the county. Yeah, okay. Tips uh, Kamogi team, they're back in action this weekend against Kilkenny. Um, two wins from three so far. So there'll be plenty of optimism for um, for the team heading into this one. Yeah, just before we move on to Kamogi, just mentioned the tip under 20 footballers. They oh, sorry. Drew with, um, drew with Limerick last Friday yeah. night in, on the all weather. So, but I think the, both teams would have done a nice bit of preparation on all weather. So that's a um, good crowd in there Friday night, Gaelic like football match. So I would have thought maybe. They, that would be for under twenty football. Maybe that'd be a good way to go. Like I know Tipper away in Clare on in Quilty on Saturday. So, but I thought maybe Friday night matches would be maybe better for under twenty. But um, 
I suppose, look, disappointing draw in one way, because Tip would be hoping to win that game, but the way the second half went, even though Limerick got the equaliser to earn the draw, definitely Limerick looked like the more potent team, defensively very solid, and Tip struggled to break them down, while Limerick tended to, they had more shots uh, away from home, uh, or sorry, they had more opportunities, um, so look, all is not lost, like it probably, it'll probably come down to score difference now, to be the, the second team, in terms of, um, like the, Tip will be playing clear and they're away to Waterford finishing up. So it could be maybe between Limerick and, and Tip as to maybe who beats Waterford by more, maybe to get through along with Clare into the second phase. But yeah, moving on to Camogie, yeah, it's a big um big weekend for Tip. And like you have the seniors looking to build on their, their wins over Cork and Galway. Like they're away to Kilkenny on, on Saturday. Um yeah, geez, like you think wouldn't it be some triumvirate if they were able to beat the three big so called big three in the one year and like if if they were to beat Kilkenny, they'd be in a great position maybe to, to wake a league final, um, particularly with the last game against Clare, who have struggled in the league so far. But that's not to say that maybe Clare have been missing players and maybe will get stronger as the league has gotten on. So um, you wouldn't be taking that one for granted at all. But uh, eventually you have the Miners looking to stay winning up in, against Antrim in Belfast. That's in the, in the All-Ireland Championship. And then, of course, this was the big one is the juniors in their league final against Cork on Saturday. Still no venue for that game yet. But um, I suppose any time you get to a league final, it's 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 a good year. And like they already lost to Cork, but I think it was only by four points in, in January. So I think they seem to be playing an awful lot better now. And maybe their understanding is better. And uh, like if they could turn that one around and maybe get up, get up a higher division, get up to maybe some of the... the playing with some of the um the first team or some of the weaker ones say weaker first teams but I think that's the way it goes if you can go up and play some of the maybe first county teams maybe um to be a good feel for where they are. Yeah like but just to, again the the senior camogie team like people have a great chance for a league final and mm -hmm. uh if you win this game and it's the first year of a new management team for Kilkenny with Peter Clear and yeah. he's been without Denise Gall, Miriam Walsh, Claire Field and Grace Walsh. Um, and on the tip side, Coda McIntyre seems to be okay. She limped off against Cork, but that she might be okay. Mm -hmm. And then Karen Kennedy, maybe she'd be ready to step up and, and play even more of a part. Yeah, I would have thought maybe that Karen, um, like coming on the second half against Cork, she'd missed the first two games through injury. That she, if she's, I'm sure the last two weeks she would have been rested and stuff, and maybe she'd be keen to maybe get a start in this one. Coda Cork missed the, the Cork game through being bridesmaid, I caught the band's wedding, so like she'll be back. So you think on paper tip, tip's team should be slightly stronger. And look, um, Kilkenny are probably not at their strongest at the moment, but you know, tip have found it very, very hard to beat Kilkenny in recent years. Like last year, when in a crucial league game in Pilltown, where tip, if they got a win, they would have got to the league final. Kilkenny won a narrow game last year in the All Ireland Championship in Nolan Park, a game tip dominated. Tip only got out of there with a draw, like so. It's, it's the very same as the men's team, Kilkenny. Just saying, they're, they're they 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 never give anything up easy. But like, if there's a great opportunity to get finally get maybe get a win over them, this is a great opportunity this this Saturday. I'm not sure where the venue is yet. I don't think it's been determined, but I think Kilkenny. Yeah. So um, St Mary's Newport, geez, they had a, a brilliant win in the All Ireland Senior D hurling final, the Niall McInerney Cup against Gloucester End of Galway. And 2-3 early on, kind of set the platform. But geez, joint, Vanigan, uh, joint captain Shane Flanagan scoring four goals. He's, he'll hardly have a better day when he ever togs out for the rest of his life. Yeah, I know. It's just, just great for them. And like, it's great to see, I suppose, Newport, I suppose, getting that sort of All-Ireland victory. And I suppose it will probably, and like uh, Paddy Kelly and Dave Minogue, two great hurling men, like from Nina and Ballina Hinch, like they're... I suppose it's just probably just ignited maybe that bit of hunger and hurling in the school. And like, like that, I, I would have thought that Newport, look, it's not a huge area, but like you're pulling from Newport, you have Maru Boher, you have, I think you have one guy from Ahan, you have Ballon Like, there's enough players there to, I definitely be playing higher than D grade. I thought they'd be, I think they have a lot of guys maybe eligible to, that are still there that can probably give the C grade a good run at the next year. Minimum C grade, I'd say, going forward, like, because, um, and you're probably feeding off Limerick's, uh, I suppose, development too, the likes of uh, Young Collipy there, who, from Aru Bohor, like, so, um, I think it's just, somewhere, it's a definitely a school that can definitely push on, like Boris Lee, like Boris Lee have 
crept up from D up to B grades in the last couple of years. And um, you're like, I suppose I'm just, you'd like to see maybe the likes of Ross Gray picking things up like they've slipped back towards D grade as well. And um, yes, yeah, so it's great for them. Like I know any All Ireland title in any grade was is very very encouraging. Like and um, I didn't get to see much of the, the Crow Cup final, but for the fact that it went to extra time, it just shows you how maybe. How close maybe Nina could have been maybe to win an All Ireland, even though Le- Rayfields came up short. Um, they still went there and performed. And uh, look, I think it's it's one of the great competitions, that schools competition. And uh, look, it's still hard to beat Kieran's. And like people might be looking at that and thinking, look, Kilkenny would be still look Kilkenny will still be strong at the under twenty championship this year. It was like a the good core of that team will be Kieran's team will be will be making up that Kilkenny under twenty panel. Yeah, and um, I had Nicky Brennan and Niall Moore on you know, our game show a couple of weeks ago, and Nicky Brennan was talking about how many of those guys at Kieran's are probably a year older than mm. a lot of the other schools that are playing there as well. So, you know, it's still very, very good to be getting far in that competition against a team like them, you know, who is mm. so strong and has such a pick with Inky Kenny. But it was yeah. 26 points to 118 for a finish after extra time. Uh, mm. the, tip, the tip ladies footballers, they um, secure Division Two status, or they can yeah. this weekend. Yeah, I don't think they were ever in... Difficulty of being relegated, but it was, um, I suppose technically they could have if they had lost, been dragged into a relegation battle. But no, they, they beat Westmead comfortably, two ten to seven points. Sorry, Monaghan, sorry, two ten to seven. So like they're safe. Um, play a dirty goal this weekend and this Sunday in their last home game. Like that, we neither team went to play for Kildare and Toronto in the league final. So but, but I suppose it, it's a real good game to get ahead into the championship and. Um, just I suppose you look at the Munster Championship, like Cork are struggling in senior level. That's but they've been at their lowest ebb for a long time. Like you think for a, a county that's been so good at ladies football, Watford are back in intermediate. Yeah, so it look like, looks like Kerry have kicked on again. Like they're really chasing that all Ireland. So like you would have thought, like we all know how ultra competitive that all Ireland's maybe a level of ladies football is. But I thought, but there's definitely a chance. I I, I don't see Tip maybe. I think minimum if Tip could get to a quarter final, maybe get out or grouping and maybe avoid being sucked into a relegation battle again, that would be a good year. And um look, you think about it how they lost to Kildare by a point and lost to Tyrone by a point. I think the Kildare match they didn't have Ashley Maloney like and um like and the lost to West Mead by a point. The three games they lost, they lost by a point. So they'd be very competitive. Just um just if they could if they had to maybe turn two of those results into wins, they would have been in a league final and been promoted. So um on the face of it, it looked like it looks like a disappointing campaign, but fine margins from being a very, very good campaign. Okay, well, look, that's pretty much it from the show this week. Just a reminder that the Nina Guardian is on sale now. And other than that, Shane, we'll, we'll chat again next yep. week, hopefully after a league semi-final win. Yeah, lovely.